Medieval Dynasty is a simulation, crafting, and town management game developed by RenderCube. The aim of the game is to improve your skills, knowledge, and reputation to help grow and expand your town. You'll go from picking up sticks and throwing spears at wildlife to having an empire of workers that grow your crops, tend to your animals, and produce goods to sell in towns. And as you grow this village from two or three people to 20, the, the town management aspect of this game really shines through. You have to keep your villagers happy, keep them warm, keep them housed, provide them with jobs and give them the tools to do those jobs and make sure your economy as a whole works. And now, as of the most recent patch, you can do all of this in co-op with friends. I played this game when it came out into early access and it was pretty lacking, to be honest. But now, years later, after its full release, I want to talk about if it's worth playing in 2024. So first up, I want to talk about town building and game progression. So kind of where your game will look from the start to the end and what you'll do along the way. So when you first start, a lot of your time will be spent gathering resources and crafting. So you'll be manually hitting trees to get logs. You'll be picking straw from near the river and you'll be going out and hunting animals for food. But as you progress, you can build new buildings and advance your technology tree. So if you go out and you hunt lots of animals, you lay traps for rabbits and you hunt deer, you'll advance that hunting technology and then you'll get like the hunting station and then you can recruit villagers to go out and hunt animals for you. Keep going, you can unlock the fishing hut and it kind of progresses like that. And it's the same with all areas of the game. So you start planting seeds and growing crops and you'll progress your farming technology. Eventually you'll unlock a hen house, cattle, horses, donkeys. And as you unlock all of these new buildings, people can work at them. And this gets even more in depth when you realize every single new building has a list of kind of blueprints you can unlock. So new items that you can get in the game and craft in the game that are tied to the building. So this technology kind of dictates what's in the game and the more technology you get, the more this game grows and the bigger it is. So early in the game, we built a kitchen and you can get a cook who will cook the food. So you go and hunt a deer and you drop that meat over in like the food storage place and the cook will go and get that cook it into cooked food and then put it back for your villagers to eat and for you to eat, which is like automation of a, a thing that you would have to do yourself at the start. But then as you progress, you can unlock these different these different recipes and these different things that the kitchen can make. So I think in our second year, we unlocked soups and porridges, and now we can grow carrots and gather mushrooms and meat and fish, and our crafters can craft wooden bowls. This all gets taken by the kitchen to make soups that then can be given out to your villagers and keep them happy, or you can take up to the towns and sell for gold to unlock new recipes. And yeah, that's just one example of kind of the different types of production. That's just one building, the kitchen, and there are so many buildings all with their own different things in them. So yeah, this is a very in-depth game. And if you like managing different systems, managing towns, kind of simulation style games, this really, really scratches an itch that I haven't felt in a long time. And next I wanna talk about the heart of the game and that's simulation. This is one of the things that this game does best. Just sitting back and watching your town grow and progress and just go about its daily work is incredibly satisfying. You can see workers craft and transport firewood to keep houses warm. You can see people chopping trees or crafting baskets and it just feels incredibly immersive watching this play out in first person or third person in real time. On top of this, pretty much everything you can do or craft, you can have a villager take on that job too to help you. If we look at simply building a house, every step of building that house feels realistic and is fully animated. So you chop down a tree, it needs to be chopped down into parts, you need to strip the branches and then chop it into logs. You then got to carry these logs and you hew them into planks, go down to the river and gather straw for the roof. And then as you do more advanced buildings, you can look into stone and you can create padding for the walls to insulate them during winter. It's really wild how much they, they focus on realism in this game. I, I've played a lot of like crafting and survival type games where you do have building and you know you see the plan of the building. But I think this one does it really well. It's one of the most realistic. And I just wanted to mention that there aren't many games that do simulation as good as this. Like they don't do a survival crafting game where realism and simulation is as is the focus and i think it's worth mentioning because it's one of the game's main strengths speaking of big strengths let's talk about one of the main things that brought me back to make this video and that is multiplayer so as of the most recent patch they added multiplayer co-op up to four people and you start on a brand new map called the oxbow this is a large map with i think four main towns filled with bandits animals and points of interest and the multiplayer is pretty good so far. I think they've done a really good job. So there's always a worry with these sort of games that the creator of the map is going to have all of the power, all of the ability, and it's going to be the main character. And then everyone else is kind of a companion. Maybe your inventories will vanish when you log out. Maybe you don't have your own skill tree. 
But that's not the case in Medieval Dynasty. Each of you has your own skill tree, your own skill points to allocate, your own inventory. You can have your build and have your own house, have your own goals and, and abilities and things that you are good at and things that you do. But then the things that really matter, so like working towards the town's goals, working through the technology tree is all shared. If I buy a recipe for a new thing to produce, anybody that's working on that map with me also gets that technology and we work towards it. So you're encouraged to put your goal together for the big things and then you're encouraged to do your own thing to progress the talent tree, which benefits everyone. You know, if you unlock, say, the hen house and you can get eggs, then, you know, everyone benefits from that, from having better food and the money that comes from it. If you go down into the mines and produce tools and bronze weapons and bronze pickaxes and bronze axes for your team, everyone benefits from it, even though you have all the skills in it. So it's they've done a really good way of managing this. And I think it solves one of the main issues I had with the game when I first played it. And that is that it felt like a real slog. Two years ago when I played this, this is a medieval simulator and it's super realistic. But that means that you have to build your houses beam by beam. You have to haul your crafted goods to town with a small limited inventory space. So yeah, this, this feels really well paced that, you know, one person can focus on one thing, another can focus on another, and you can become good at it. You can have the skill points to handle that thing and you can help each other. And sort of the town is growing at a really good pace that you don't feel sort of the tedium. Like you get through a really hard thing that you're working on and you don't have to worry about food because someone's already made it. You know, your weapons stop breaking and you don't have to worry because someone's already made new ones. So yeah, I think that is, you know, I, I don't think after playing the co-op version, I even want to look at the single player anymore because it's just so well balanced. Okay, now I've said nothing but good things. I, I have said nothing but good things about this game. It, it's, it's pretty, pretty incredible. But we need to talk about the negatives. This needs to be a balanced, you know, review. And it has a big negative, and that is the combat. So when, when you look at what you'll be doing most of the time is hunting animals. That is honestly really good. You know, the archery is really good. You can use bows, crossbows, you can throw spears. And they have drop, they have range, they have, you know, they have, everything's really well balanced and it feels good. And hunting animals feels pretty good. But there are now bandits in the game. And fighting them sucks. <laughs> There's no real armor system or weapon system in the game as far as I can tell. So you always feel like a squishy farmer. You know, even when you have the really good sewing workstations, you're making like noble gear or ranged gear, ranger like hoods. You're never making like shields and swords and a suit of armor. You never you're never feeling like a warrior. There's no directional combat or advanced parry system. You just have block and attack. So it's just run at each other and smash the attack button until one of you misses or one of you, you know, loses. So it, it, it's not great, but you'd think, okay, well, I'll just keep them raging and use a bow. That doesn't work either because their AI is really bad. They just kind of path weird. They get stuck. They leash really weird. I don't know. I personally think if you're not going to make a good armor system and a proper melee combat system, there wasn't much point in adding the bandits. I think if they added to this game some sort of bandit raid to your town where they steal your crops or they let us build watchtowers or walls and they let us like build defensive equipment and offensive weaponry, this would be really, really good and bring in a whole lot of new people. But right now, bandits alone don't really do that much. You can just go sit next to a bandit and shoot it with a bow and it struggles to get to you and it just flails around. It, it's really weird. So yeah, that, that's probably my, my only real negative in the game. As someone who spent a lot of time in this game hunting animals, that's great. It's just the combat, especially the melee combat, which just falls a bit flat. So overall thoughts and overall review is, is Di Medieval Dynasty in 2024 worth buying? Is it worth getting? Is it good? That depends on what you're looking for. And that, that's what I'll say here. This game isn't a medieval combat game. This isn't, you know, um, Kingdom Come Deliverance. It's not Bannerlord. It's not Chivalry or Mortal Online. It's none of those. It's barely an RPG. This is a medieval simulator game with a big focus on gathering, crafting, town management, and really getting immersed in this world. That, that's what the game does well. The systems in the game are very well developed and they feel really well balanced to the point where you, you, you really feel the grind, but it feels rewarding. You know, you feel that struggle in the early game that you have to work hard. You have to find things to craft. What sells well? What's profitable? How do I unlock the new technology? What's the best way to do it? How do I advance the town? Who works where? You know, everything feels really rewarding finding it out discovering it for the first time and there's replayability here too in how you decide to manage your town 
The villagers and managing them is great too, from housing them, giving them jobs, finding a, a system where you can balance everyone's needs, keeps everyone happy and alive is really, really rewarding if you're if you're into that as a as a gameplay loop. So yeah, I, I would say if that sounds like something you want to play, this is one of the better games out there. This is really good. I'm surprised how much fun I'm having. And if you have friends to play this with, the the, the fun you can have in this game just is, is so much more. It, it, I'm so shocked how good this feels as a multiplayer game and how good it is to just grow a town with your friends and have fun along the way. This honestly has surprised me how good it is. So yeah, I, I think the game's really good. It has its issues. It's an indie game, but it does so much well and there's so much to love here that I would definitely recommend it if you're into those sort of games. But that's that's the review. That's kind of, that's a look at the game in 2024. I'd love to know what you think of the game in the comments. Did you try it on release? Are you thinking about trying it again? Have you tried the multiplayer? I'd, I'd love to hear what you think. But yeah, that that's it. Take care. And if you like these style of, you know, unbiased review videos subscribe to the channel for more i do a lot of these as we've hit 2024 i'm gonna go look at a lot of other games that i've you know expanded over the years and have a look back at them so yeah subscribe if you want to see more of that but take care and i'll catch you in the next one